Okay, for today's lesson, we're going to start looking at forces that are acting on an incline. Okay, we're going to look at Newton's second law, look at how that applies to when we have forces on an incline, and then we're also going to look at how we find components of that force. Okay, so let's start with a force, an object on an incline. And we want to ask the question, why is it that things roll down an incline? So let's start with our free body diagram. Okay, just like you saw in the video prior, we can define our x-axis and our y-axis relative to the surface of the incline. So when I draw the weight of the object, it still acts straight down, but now it's at an angle relative to my x and y, so I'm going to break it into components. Okay, when we talk about why do things roll down an incline, well, that's because we have a component of our weight that's acting in the same direction as the incline. Notice the incline and this x component of the weight are parallel to each other. So things roll down an incline because there's a force acting in the direction of our motion. Okay, so we want to ask the question, why is it that objects accelerate more if the incline is steeper? We all know that that happens, let's look at why. Okay, here's our object sitting on the incline, there's our weight, there's our y component of our weight, and there's our x component of our weight. Okay, we know we have the, incline, the angle of the incline, and that's a similar triangle to what we create with our forces. Watch how these forces change as the incline gets steeper. So I'm going to change the angle of my incline, still going to draw my weight. There's the y component of our weight and the x component of our weight. Notice how our x component is greater than before, and it's that x component of our weight that causes things to roll down the incline angles are going to match. Okay, here's even steeper. There's my weight, there's my y component of my weight, and there's my x component of my weight. Okay, hopefully you saw in kind of in these three different examples that it's that x component of our weight that kept getting bigger. So when we say objects are going to accelerate more if the angle is steeper, it's because of that x component Sorry about that. It's because of that x component of our weight. As the slope gets steeper, that x component gets bigger, causing a greater acceleration. Okay, if we think about this part right here, okay, what is the value of fgy equal in magnitude to? Hopefully, if you thought ahead, it's equal to the normal force. So we didn't have the normal force on our free body diagram, but we're going to need to include it. So let's apply this to a problem. Okay, at SeaWorld, we've got a 900 kilogram polar bear sliding down a wet slide. We're going to assume friction is negligible at first. Okay, and it's going to be inclined at an angle of 25 degrees to the horizontal. With what force is the polar bear pulled down the incline? And then we also want to ask, what is his acceleration? Okay, so I want to start with our free body diagram. We've got our weight acting down. We've got our normal force acting at an angle. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to break that weight into components. I'm labeling these a little bit differently just to get used to different notation. Okay, what I've got is an F of P, I'm calling that a parallel force, and an F perpendicular instead of my X and Y. Okay, now that I've got those forces defined, let's look at what else we know. We know our angle, and the angle of the incline is going to be equal to the angle of the triangle that our vectors make. And then we also know the mass of the polar bear. The goal is to find that pulling force that's going to cause them to go down the incline. We also want to find acceleration. Okay, when we do our trigonometry, remember all we're dealing with is a right triangle. So we've got our pulling force that's equal to the weight of the object times the sine of our angle since it's opposite. The weight we know is just equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity. And then when I solve for the answer, we're getting 3,727 and a half newtons. We've answered the question. All we wanted to do was find the force that's pulling the polar bear down the incline. Okay, if I want to find his acceleration, here's where Newton's second law comes in. We're going to do the sum of the forces is going to equal to the mass times the acceleration. If we look at all of the forces that are acting along the incline, the only one we have is that parallel force. So I'm going to say F of P is equal to MA. Put in the numbers that we know. So we've got our 
pulling force in newtons. We've got our mass in kilograms. Now we're going to solve for A. So the, the acceleration of the polar bear is just 4.14 meters per second squared. Okay, so how does this problem change if we include friction? So let's take the same polar bear problem, but now let's say he experiences 1,200 newtons of friction. What is his acceleration now? Okay, so here's our problem, and again, this is without friction. If I include friction, notice how my free body diagram is going to change. I now have friction acting against the direction of our motion. When I sum the forces this time, I'm going to have that parallel force acting down the incline. Friction is going to go against that incline, and we're going to set that equal to mass times acceleration. We have the pulling force. They gave us the friction force of 1,200 newtons. The mass of the polar bear hasn't changed. That's still 900 kilograms. We're going to multiply by A. This time our acceleration is going to be 2.81 meters per second squared. It should make sense that our acceleration is going to be less than how quickly we would accelerate down the incline if there was no friction. Okay, to kind of summarize problems at an incline. Okay, if we have a, an object sitting on an incline, this is kind of our basic starting point free body diagram. We have our weight acting straight down. We're going to break it into components. We know that the angle of the incline matches the angle of that vector triangle. Okay, the normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface. If I have friction, it's going to go against the direction that the object's moving. Okay, to try to sum up the forces, we're just using Newton's second law, so the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Okay, if this is what our free body diagram looks like, it's always going to be that parallel or pulling force minus the force due to friction is going to equal to ma. Well, what if they didn't give you the friction force? Remember that we also have an equation that allows us to find the friction force if we know the coefficient force and the normal force. Well, what if the normal force isn't given to you? Hopefully you've kind of keyed in on from the free body diagram that this perpendicular component of our weight and our normal force should be equal to each other. Okay. So F of N is always going to equal the perpendicular component of our weight. Since it's adjacent to the angle, we're going to use cosine of theta. Okay, so our normal force now is no longer equal to the weight, it's equal to a component of the weight. So again, you might have to do a little bit more work, but you're still coming back to Newton's second law equation.